Step 4, that is using MATLAB system identification toolbox to identify your process object. So we will use our record data import to the MATLAB and using this uh, system identification toolbox to identify your process object. As shown in the screen, we will use the ident command in the MATLAB and import the data come from your system. And using this uh, system identification toolbox combined your actual data, the data that is uh, your control signal and the feedback signal from your process object. Once we execute this uh, MATLAB code, we will use this ident the command to call the system identification toolbox. Here we will import the data. That data come from our system. Input that is our control data. In my case, that is the 25, 15, and 25 output control. The output data that is our process value feedback data. In my case, the output that is a temperature value. Usually, to identify the process model, we need two groups of the input and output data. The first group of data will be used to identify the model. The second group will be used to verify the model. After we import the data, we will use the process model as our identified model. We will use this process model to identify the model of your process. And in this process model area, we can select how many ports. For example, the typical of your system may have one port, two ports, or three ports. Maybe your system could have a zero, or have a delay, or have an integrator. We can select according to your system. For example, currently I'm using two ports, and I hit the estimate. Here will show the identification process. And the bottom line is estimating data that is 95%. It's pretty much. So the black line, that is the actual data. The blue line, that is the output data from this two pulse model. It's fees, that is 95%. Let's use the first order. The first order shows 94. 0.8 is a little bit lower than second order. Here I add a zero. After I tried the different models, I tried a second order, first order, three orders, and even the model have a zero. So Eventually, I found the second order model that can give us the best fees here, 95. So that's why eventually I select this second order model as our process model. So if we double click this P2, so it will pop up the actual process model. So we can see this is a second order model, KP, TP1, TP2, that is the variables. Here, the parameters showing here. That is our process model here. And once we have this process model, we can implement this process model to our PLC controller. So the next question is, how can we implement this transfer function, the process model, into the PLC system? And let's look at the next step. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe. See you in next video.